Uh, hello everyone, this is Christiana El Trayan, your host of the Pradi Consciousness Summit, and we are here tonight with Dr. David Jokers, um, a very uh, interesting uh, scientist who is studying the medical uh, points of um, intermittent fasting and how we can heal with it, and it's also a natural doctor practicing in Georgia. We are happy to have you with us, David, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, it's great. It's an honor to be on with you, Christiana. Mm -hmm. uh, we thank you for all the articles and the scientific evidence on the um, uh, alternative healing methods and the natural healing methods that you are promoting. It's good for people to know that there is an alternative to you know, surgery and uh, yeah. chemical um, chemical uh, drugs and stuff like that. And uh, we were wondering, how did you get into uh, the natural medicine? How, how were you attracted to this field? Yeah, well, you know, growing up, my mom was always interested in just a natural holistic lifestyle. And she actually, uh, she was a nurse and then she ended up studying to become a naturopath. And while she was studying, she she just lived close to nature. She would always, everywhere we lived, we'd always have a big garden. She grew a lot of our own food and whatnot. And I was an athlete growing up. And so, uh, you know, not interested in health other than for performance. And so she would tell me things like, you know, if you eat this kale or whatever it was, that it would give me more energy. I'd be able to perform better. And so for me, I would eat something no matter, you know, what it tasted like to me, as long as I felt like it would improve my performance. And so that was kind of my first step into, uh, you know, that, that you can use food as performance fuel or in a sense food as medicine. And, uh, you know, in my early 20s, I became a personal trainer. So I was into sports and fitness and performance. So naturally, I became a personal trainer. And, um, and I was living healthier than anybody I knew at the time. And all of a sudden, I started developing very severe digestive problems. I had always, my digestive system was always a weak area of my body. But uh, it got really bad to where I ended up dropping about 30 pounds. And I'm, I'm 165 pounds, right? Uh, just basically, you know, a muscular 165 pound guy. If I drop 30 pounds, I'm like literally anorexically thin. And that's pretty much what happened. And I developed uh, basically a condition called orthostatic hypotension where my blood pressure, um, when I would go from sitting to standing, wouldn't catch up with me because I was having dysregulation between my brain and my adrenals, right? Telling my adrenal glands to produce the right amount of stress hormone. And so I would get really dizzy. I had really low blood pressure, really low energy. And, um, you know, everybody was concerned about me. And fortunately, you know, I found a chiropractor uh, who also worked with nutrition. I made nutrition changes and started getting my spine and nervous system adjusted. And about six months, I was able to get healthy and well and regain my muscle mass and get my energy and my life back. And, uh, you know, I realized, hey, I want to help other people heal naturally like this. So what happened with me is was a tribute to the way that my body can heal itself. And so I want to go out and help other people. And, uh, you know, one of the strategies I used actually was intermittent fasting. It was something that I kind of found along my health journey that I just seemed to feel a lot better. And it wasn't right away that I started that. It was, it was, you know, a little further in my own health journey, but I realized that when I skipped breakfast and just drank a lot of water, I drank a gallon of water between the time I woke up and before I would eat my first meal, which would be at a minimum, you know, midday, noon or something like that. And then um, typically it was actually in the afternoon, like two or three o'clock. When I drank that much water and just hydrated really, really well, I just felt good. I felt really mentally stable. Um, I was able to gain more lean body mass, more muscle tissue. I was stronger in the gym. It was surprising, you wouldn't think that, but uh, but I actually was. And I would condense my meals to typically either I would just eat once a day, or I would eat two meals in like a four-hour eating window. And I just really felt felt really good. And um, that's kind of how I discovered that. And you know, I got out as a as a doctor and um, started my clinic out here just north of Atlanta and Cobb County in Georgia and um, started my clinic and just passionate about helping people get well and um, you know working a tremendous amount of hours 70 80 hour weeks you know just start as a small business owner just starting my business and I was literally living in my clinic and um, just kind of fell off of my I was still eating you know healthy but fell off of my intermittent fasting strategies and um, 
and was eating too much carbohydrate for my body type. And I ended up actually developing skin cancer. So here I was 28 years old. I had a big nodule on my nose that I could look at every day. And my grandfather actually died of metastatic skin cancer. And I grew up in Florida on the beach and uh, got exposed to probably a lot more sun and sunburns than I could have because I was a surfer and whatnot. Uh, and so I know that was in my family. I was I had pre, you know, that that sort of past history. And so I was looking at it every day, and I realized, you know what, this right here. At first, I thought it was acne. I was hoping it was acne, but it wasn't. It didn't go away. It was just bigger, red, and it was big and red. And you know, as a doctor, I know what's normal, what's not normal. And I, really, ultimately, I just took an inventory of my life, and I realized, hey, you know, from a mindset perspective. I was really living out of fear, right? And when we live out of fear, you know, that's an antagonist to healing. You can't really heal if fear is your primary driver. And so I was fear of failure, right, was my driving force. And, and um, I realized, hey, I, I really need mental, emotional, spiritual work to overcome that. Um, also, I was, you know, from a nutrition perspective, I was eating too many carb carbohydrates for my body type. I really do good on a ketogenic diet, doing you know long fasting, things like that. I just do better. I was overtraining. I was exercising too much, right? Not giving my body the time it needed to heal and regenerate. I really wasn't sleeping well. I was staying up too late, just working too much. I didn't have the right life balance, and uh, so I started taking inventory of that and realized, hey, I was actually creating this sort of a problem in my own body. And um, and so started a program to overcome all of those things. Really working on myself mentally, emotionally, spiritually, cutting down my workload, hiring you know good employees, um, you know eating right, doing my intermittent fasting, super hydration protocols, and I was able to overcome that. In fact, in four months, my nodule on my nose uh, completely vanished. Right, and to this day, it's only like a slight, tiny little. Um, you know, little 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 scar that you can kind of see from where it was, but uh, you know, again, that was another sign that God was telling me, "Hey, your body can heal itself." And uh, you know, these are the types of principles that you need to apply for a long, strong, and healthy life. And uh, you know, so when you have victory over something like that in life, I think it really gives you a level of authority over it. And so, I consider myself an expert in helping people overcome chronic disease because you know I've dealt with that myself and. Um, you know, using intermittent fasting or extended fasting along with things like a ketogenic diet, um, you know, advanced supplementation and whatnot. Um, you know, I use those strategies to help people overcome your chronic disease on a regular basis and just get their life and their health back. And uh, it's beautiful to see somebody who's, you know, in a sense, I guess, been crippled by the ways of this world and, um, you know, be able to change their ways and see the healing that was really, you know, it's really our birthright, this natural way of healing, that uh, this power that God put within us to regenerate and uh, to regain the ability to do that and, uh, you know, unlock the, the potential within them. So it's been, been a beautiful journey. So if you were to sum up, to basically sum up the steps that you followed for your healing, what would be in uh, just a few words, a few steps that you've followed then and you still follow now for your health and healing and that you recommend yeah. to us. That's, those are, that's a great question. So number one, it really all starts with mindset because, you know, you can take the best supplements, you can see the best doctor, but if your mind, if your mindset is not right, if you see yourself as a victim, if you're living out of fear, um, you know, if you are emotionally trapped, then, um, you're not going to heal. So you got to really, really get right in the mind and, um, and get the, the proper help that you need. And I mean, at, at all times, you know, it's our, it's our job to take captivity of our mind. And uh, to, to think and to speak, the words that we speak are so powerful, to speak and walk um, as a champion walks, right? And see ourselves as an overcomer. I think that's just so, so critically important. And realize that God is our healer and that, you know, he never stops, right? He's always smiling down on us. He loves us. There's no condemnation. He loves us fully and he wants healing in our lives. And, um, you know, it's us that it's, it's our own it's our own stinking thinking that really gets in the way. And so that's really where it starts. And then from there, you know, practical strategies, um, you know, definitely taking care of our spine and our posture, you know, whether it's like doing exercises to work on your core, uh, your core strength, and really, really trying to focus on keeping your head upright, um, your ear in line with your shoulder, 
Uh, you know, if you have access to a chiropractor, that can really be beneficial when it comes to the healing process. Um, also, as far as nutrition goes, really, really, you want to be on a lower carbohydrate, high good fat diet. So things, you know, foods that turn into sugar ultimately are going to cause more inflammation in your body. So you want to reduce the amount of obviously processed sugar, but also higher carbohydrate foods. And instead, you want to really load up on non-starchy vegetables, okay? So vegetables that don't turn into sugar, that's going to be things like celery, cucumbers, um, collard greens, kale, bok choy, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, stuff like that. It's all really, really good. A lot of herbs, basil, oregano, turmeric, rosemary, right? You're going to get a lot of those really high-powered, antioxidant-rich herbs and good fats. So I'm a huge fan of getting a lot of good fats, coconut oil, coconut products, uh, avocados, olives, olive oil, even butter from grass-fed cows. It's loaded with nutrients as long as the cows eat grass. Super good for your body. And then when your body takes in those fats, it's going to be able to utilize those as a, an immediate energy source. And you're actually training your body to be more efficient and use your own stored body fat, right? Like even me, like I am, you know, 8 to 10% body fat. But nevertheless, I have tons of stored energy right there that my body can use, even though I'm extremely lean. And, and I literally can go days without food and actually preserve muscle mass, right? Um, because I've got enough stored fuel in inside of my body, even though, you know, if you looked at me, I have a six pack, you know, it's like, you wouldn't think I do, but I do, right? We all have it there. And, um, and so our body, we want to train our body to be able to utilize that for energy effectively. That's the key thing. And so when people are overweight, for example, they're not, they're, they're just, their bodies aren't trained to use fat for fuel. And so when you load up on the good fats, you keep your carbohydrates low, your insulin balances, and, um, you're able to, you know, burn fat for fuel. So get in a lot of those good fats, um, clean protein, which, you know, for me, I eat meat uh, and I, I typically do it once a day. And it's usually a small amount of either grass fed uh, beef or wild caught salmon. It's always got to be sustainably raised, right? Um, organic, grass fed, pasture raised, right? That's what you're always looking for. If you're a vegetarian or vegan, um, then you're going to want to do maybe a little bit of legumes um, or. Um, yeah, we really don't need a tremendous amount of protein, but nuts and seeds, those are going to be lower in carbohydrates in general. So doing like sprouted pumpkin seeds, pumpkin seeds are very rich in zinc, B vitamins, so stuff like that, um, walnuts, almonds, different things like that. So getting some of those nuts in can be really helpful. And also like a vegan protein powder can be really helpful because it's, it's broken down. And I think that's another key thing is taking stress off the digestive system by doing things like soups smoothies, um, you know, where you're getting good protein powder uh, in there, where you're getting the, the amino acids without the stress on your digestive tract, that can be really, really helpful. Um, so doing that, lots of hydration, really drinking a lot of water. So, you know, they, we, they say, hey, you should drink at least a half a, or a minimum is, one, is half your body weight in ounces. So for me, 160 pounds, 80 ounces of water is my minimum, but really ultimately, uh, I'm drinking over a gallon. Typically on a, on a daily basis, I'm drinking about 160 ounces of water. And if you flush your system like that, you will notice that your energy goes up. Okay. Now you always want to do it away from meals. You don't want to drink a lot with meals because it will dilute your stomach acid and your enzymes. But between meals, if you're drinking a lot of water and you're also doing electrolytes, like right here, I've actually got a little bit of organic chicken broth and you could also do vegetable broth. Um, that's diluted, right? So I just buy the organic broth. Now, sometimes I'll make my own and I'll put about a third broth in there and then I'll put hot water, hot filtered water in. And it's like a little mineral drink. So it's giving me electrolytes right there. The chicken broth has the benefit of collagen protein, which is good for your joints and your gut. If it's ch from true chicken stock and you always want to make sure it's organic, um, the vegetable broth will provide antioxidants, which is good. And a lot of minerals. And the key is the minerals there that is really important for good hydration. If you drink too much water without the minerals, you're going to have issues. And if you're on a lower carbohydrate diet in general, you need more minerals because insulin, which is this hormone that keeps blood sugar up or takes sugar out of the bloodstream, puts it into the cells, also has to do with retaining 
salts and minerals. And so when you go on a lower carbohydrate diet, your insulin goes down, you end up excreting more of these minerals. So it's important that you're getting those in your diet. So you want to use a lot of good salts like pink salt, uh, Himalayan sea salt, or Redmond's real salt, or something along those lines. Really, really good idea. And drinking a lot of water can be super, super helpful. Get out, get regular activity, regular movement. Doesn't mean you need to exercise at a high intensity every day. Um, just needs, means you need to move, right? So get out and walk. Get in touch with nature. Ground your body. Go barefoot on grass, dirt, sand. Get out, get in contact with nature. The natural electromagnetic frequency of the earth is very healing for our body. It's something that our, our, our body has adapted to over the, you know, the history of mankind. And we're always around, like you and I, Christiana, we're, we're sitting here in front of computers, you know, so that's a negative electromagnetic frequency, and all of us have it. We're, at, we're around computers. We're around cell phones. So we need to get back in touch with nature to help get that dirty electricity off of our body, and that's going to really help the healing process. So those are just a couple of the you know key foundational strategies I would recommend the listeners get started with. Perfect. We thank you so much for summing that that up. Uh, going back to fasting, we noticed that you have a lot of scientific and you know good experience with explaining how the body functions on that. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are very much interested as well in how the body get, gets more energy during fasting because I myself have experiences of having gone uh, for about a month without physical food and yep, it yep. has been very beneficial for my health and for more, my energy levels as well. And also during the time now, I, I have very little food altogether. So I have yeah, basically yeah. one vegan meal a day or a, one vegan meal every a couple of days so for the viewers uh, can we explain from a doctor's point of view how this how does this work because everybody thinks we're gonna die without food and yep. you are here proving that it's not true yeah absolutely absolutely and in <laughs> fact Christiana I don't typically recommend a vegan diet but you're doing it the right way and typically I don't recommend it just because um, in all reality you um, most, most vegans I know are eating way too many carbohydrates and their sugars all over the place. Yeah. But when you only eat one meal a day, you're, you can take in more carbohydrate because your body gets really, really good because of you're going long periods of time without food at yeah. taking stored body fat and turning it into something called ketones, right? So yeah. basically your body knows how to burn fat for fuel and use it effectively. And it does it by taking the fat, going to the liver and turning it into this molecule called a ketone, which is now water soluble, crosses into the cell membrane, gets into the mitochondria, crosses in the mitochondria. And ketones, as opposed to glucose, which is basically sugar, ketones produce significantly more energy in your mitochondria and significantly less free radicals and oxidative stress. And that is huge. When we use when we use glucose as our primary energy source, right? When we're used to burning sugar as our as our fuel, we're actually producing it's a dirty energy, right? It produces it does produce energy, but it produces a whole lot of metabolic waste, which is really, really bad for our body. And what does that do? That creates, you know, basically degeneration in all of our different cells and tissues and organs. But that's right, exactly. But our body can really use fat, stored body fat, and then also dietary fat. We were talking about those good fat sources, like avocados, olives, right? So I would imagine, you know, many of your listeners are on vegan diets. So I would encourage yeah. you guys, when you do eat, definitely make sure you're getting those healthy fats, avocados, olives, coconut, right? Get those really good healthy fats, nuts and seeds. Um, so you're getting a good blend of these types of fats. And that will actually only make the fasting easier for your body because your body will already be used to using fat as fuel, right? So it makes it a lot easier. And fasting and a low-carb, high-fat diet um, are really – they go hand in hand, right? They really go hand in hand because, again, this whole process of producing ketones. And ketones are also what we call epigenetic influencers. And what that means is – you know, we all know about our genes. We all have these genes that were given to us by mom and dad, and we kind of they create the blueprint.